Okay, so today is Tuesday, November 7th, 2023, and um, I am actually in a new area of where we're staying. Um, not where we're staying, but like in the same city of where we're staying up in Lake Conroe. I'm checking out some places, um, little shopping areas and whatnot. It's so neat. It's just, it's so beautiful. I love the weather right now. It feels like it might be 80, which is perfect. It has a breeze um, that feels really good. And I just got done. Um, I was in a salon and try and pull myself together. I was in the a salon. Oh, this is really cool. I'm gonna let you guys see from the back. Uh, have to figure out. So I was in a salon and just talking to him about getting my roots touched up. And there was a young girl in there, and um, she was blonde like my daughter Clara, and real sweet personality. Um, it reminded me of Clara. Um, probably about the same age. Probably about 11 or 12 years old. Uh, I'm gonna try and keep myself together right now because I want to cry. Um, and then I'm gonna have makeup all over my face for the rest of the day. Which is okay. But this is it. This is so hard. My kids are amazing. Um, Warren and Clara, and even Wyatt, like, despite our circumstances and despite everything that we have gone through. Um, you know, I don't know what their personalities are like now, but knowing that even if, even if you were to remove the, uh, the root of what it is, of what I'm fighting for, even if you were to remove that, my kids were raised in a home filled with love, unconditional love from me. And I know my kids knew that. I know that, there's no doubt in my mind. All three of them knew that I would be there for them whenever they needed me. Um, <clears throat> they, they were raised in a home with that they were they were blessed um, in everything that they ever needed and wanted. I'd have to say they never wanted for anything. They never needed for anything. Everything was always provided for them. And yet they were the most humble, loving and caring kids in the world. Now I know those who are watching this and you have kids and you may feel yours are exactly the same way and I'm not saying that mine are better than yours, not at all. But their humility, just their sweetness in their personality and their character. Like, <laughs> it is only God. It's the only Holy Spirit. It is the only it is the Holy Spirit that is indwelling in them, and had been. It is the prayers, not only of me, but my family, my mom. I guarantee you that my mom, their grandma Sojourno, have been praying for them before they were even born. My, my mom is an intercessor to, to our, it's something that she has always, 
she's always been. And I am so grateful. I am so grateful that however short that it was that I was with you guys, Warren and Clara and Wyatt I'm grateful I am incredibly grateful you guys impacted my life more than anyone in the whole world other than Jesus Christ you guys impacted me in a way that can never be changed. I have been forever changed because I was blessed to be chosen to be your mom. Clara, Warren, you guys are the sweetest, most humble, loving, and caring kids I know. You truly are. I love you with all of my heart. I know that Wyatt, oh my gosh, when Wyatt was your age, same thing. He was so sweet, so humble, so loving, so caring. I'm going to get out of the wind so that you guys aren't blown out in that recording. But Wyatt, even at... 15 years old, 14, 13 years old, he knew. He knew things about people. He had a discernment that, that can only be from the Holy Spirit, from the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And he had such a heart that people would come to him they trusted him. Even kids in middle school would come to Wyatt and tell him that they were being sexually abused by their family members. And they would come to him and tell him that they were thinking about taking their life and committing suicide. People don't do that unless they see something within you that they trust. And all three of my kids, I would have to say, all three of my kids are that way because the Holy Spirit is in them, because they are made in the image of God. And that being said, I know that God will do whatever He can to bring redemption to me, my family, and most importantly, Wyatt, Warren, and Clara. By removing me from Warren and Clara's life is one of the most evil, darkest things that anyone could do. To remove a loving and a caring mother from a child. It's even said that um, even mothers who are in prison or incarcerated or um, abusive mothers that they should still be in the life of the child with supervision they should be in the life of the child making an impact and not breaking that bond and it goes for the fathers as well and yet I see here that my kids biological father and now the new stepmom Jenna Scott are not doing that. They are not coming to me saying, hey, I want you to be involved in Warren and Clara's life. They're not saying, hey, what can we do to make this work? It's important for Warren and Clara to have their mother in their life. That's not happening. And to excuse it or blame it on the court is even worse. There is no protective order against me saying that I am unhealthy or an unfit parent. There is no protective order saying I'm a harm or a threat to my children. 
There has been no lawsuit filed against me for defamation. I would challenge him. Let's let's see what a jury says. My children deserve to have their mom back. My children deserve to have me in their life. All three of them. What is being spoken into Wyatt's life, the, the narrative and spoken into Warren and Clara's life is nothing but evil. There is nothing good that can come from that. But my hope is in the Lord. My hope is in Jesus Christ. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that all of these people will stand before God one day and they will have to account for what they've done. I also know that Warren and Clara, just as they were under some supernatural divine hedge of protection in our home when I was married to Brian, <clears throat> that they're still under that supernatural hedge, that divine hedge of protection, that their spirit and their soul are being divinely orchestrated and protected. And I know I've said this before, and this would be crazy and wild, but I feel like my kids are angels. I know they aren't, but maybe they, maybe their mission on this earth during this exact time is to bring about a true salvation maybe even a repentance upon those who are persecuting me who are persecuting God because ultimately it says in God's word that when you persecute or when you come against a child of God that you are coming against God himself and we haven't seen him to stand up with his mighty right hand. We haven't seen that. Or how about this? They haven't seen that. I have seen it because I have seen a supernatural love and protection and a mercy uh, and empowerment of God's grace in my life because I've completely submitted to God, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus Christ. <clears throat> So as I go back to my car and I go about my day, I'll be reminded of that young 11 or 12 year old, 12 year old girl in the salon that reminds me of my daughter, Clara, that I haven't seen since July of 2020, that I haven't been able to tell her I love her and I miss her and hold her and tell her how beautiful she is and tell her how humble she is. Tell her how she emanates the face of God and his love. I'll have to process that. And I'll have to trust and rely on God. Rely on Jesus to hold me up. While I continue to pray, That I can take her to ice cream someday. That I can go shoe shopping with her. That we can go clothes shopping together. And that I can sit face to face with Warren in the morning and have coffee or a soda pop and look out at the lake or, or wherever we are. And get real with him, get down to earth with my son Warren. But until that day, I will trust that God loves me. He loves my kids more than I do because he is their heavenly father. He is a just God. And I may not understand what he's doing right now. And, and I don't. I don't understand. But I do trust that he is a just God. If I think that what he has done is wrong, then he wouldn't be just. But he's just. So I will trust that he sees the bigger picture and that those that are called by his name will be saved and it will be glorious as the Lord told me. 
I love you, Warren and Clara. I want to remind you guys you were made in the image of God. Keep persevering to the very end. Don't give up. Don't waste a fight in a battle. Because everything, everything that you have done up to this point matters. And if you throw in the towel after this, or even now, or even a month ago, then everything before that is useless. Because God says, persevere through the working of your salvation until the final hour, hour till the very end. It's not persevering once saved, always saved. It's a persevering forever until God takes us home. So don't let a previous trial be in vain. Like Warren, I think about the times that you were dealing with all the bullies at school and we worked through that. <clears throat> and I started homeschooling you. And you met new friends. And you had a, an awesome time over that first two years until you left for Washington with your biological dad, Brian Scog. You were awesome, Warren. You were absolutely awesome. You made it through that trial. So don't waste that trial. Don't waste what you've gotten through already for the next few trials that God may put in front of you. And he will, there will be a test because God is fortifying you guys. There will always be a test and it's not a test to make us fail, it's a test to help us realize that we can do everything and anything that God puts in front of us. Now there are choices and decisions that we choose that are our own test, our own trial. And then it's up to us to seek God and ask him to help us pull out of that trial. But there are also tests that God puts in our path. And it is the whole reason for it is to show us how strong, how endurable we are, how much we can persevere through that. There's a reason for it. It's glory to glory. And I know that you guys were made for this, all three of you. But it's your choice. He will not go against your free will. It's your free will. Now, of course, my prayer is that you surrender and submit your free will to God, to the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, to what he has planned for your guys' life. And through that, as God increases your faith and perseverance, you will make righteous, you will be made just, and have a forever seat in the kingdom of God with him and with me. I'm with anyone else, and I can't see that I'm going, but I feel like I have been persevering, so I pray that the Lord has a seat for me in his house, and a seat <clears throat> on the wedding day. <clears throat> I love you guys. I miss you. God bless you. Father God, I ask that you increase their strength, their perseverance, and show them who they are as a child of God. In your name, amen. I love you guys. I love you. Bye.